Thank you for the invitation. I'm going to update you on the progress in research and therapy in Philadelphia positive ALL and pre ALL as we practice it today at our institution. These are my conflicts of interest. So as you know, historically, the treatment of childhood and adult ALL relies on intensive chemotherapy with about 15 chemotherapy drugs delivered for about three years. And uh, this is reported to produce a cure rate of 80 plus percent in childhood ALL. And when the same regimens are applied to adult ALL, we were stuck with an estimated five year survival of about 50% shown on the blue curve on the right side. And when we look at the outcome in community practice, so this is a study that was uh, reported from Peru. And what it shows that actually when you take the same regimens and you apply them in the community practice, whether in Peru or in India, in the childhood ALL, the cure rates are not 80 or 90%, they are down to about 60 to 70%. And even when you go up to the age of 20, the potential cure rate is at best about 40%. When you go to the adult ALL uh, 45 or older, then the cure rate is much lower. And that's simply because many of the patients in the community practice cannot go on for the three years of intensive chemotherapy. So that's why it's important to try to design a different form of therapy not like the standard classical therapy that could be delivered in shorter periods of time in order uh, to cure the patients in a better way in the community practice. Now, even in you, when you take the data in main centers, uh, you notice still a difference in the cure rate of about 20 to 30 percent with the same intensive chemotherapy regimens. And that's because of a different incidence of the subsets and their prognosis. So there are two subsets in childhood ALL, the hyperdiploid and ETV6 ranks one, which constitute about half to, of the pediatric ALL, but less than 10% of the adult ALL. And these have a favorable prognosis with intensive chemotherapy. And then you have two other subsets, the Philadelphia positive and the Philadelphia-like ALL, which are quite common, 50% of the adult ALL, only 15% of childhood ALL, and historically, with the intensive classical chemotherapy regimens, they had an unfavorable prognosis, but I'll show you that this is not the case anymore with the newer regimens. So in my view, in adult ALL, it's time to break with the 40-year-old traditional therapeutic concept of intensive chemotherapy for three years. And I say this because in Philadelphia positive ALL, there are non-chemotherapy regimens, which I'll show you with ponatinib, linatumumab, that produce the best results ever. In pre-BALL, I will show you a series of studies that use less chemotherapy for shorter duration with the addition of antibodies targeting CD20 like rituximab, CD19 like blinatumumab, and CD22 like inotuzumab, and they are showing excellent results. Finally, in my view, the CAR T cells should not be used in the setting of active disease, but in the setting of minimal residual disease. And as soon as we can, we have to change from the flow cytometry MRD measurement that looks at 10,000 cells to the next generation MRD measurement that looks at a million cells. This way we can monitor the response and decide on the change of treatment or stopping the treatment if uh, unneeded. I will not address, uh, address T-cell ALL, which will be the topic of a whole different seminar. Now, when I show you the protocols at MD Anderson, you have to realize that those protocols were designed according to the availability of the free drugs. So really, we propose to the drug companies and we ask for free drugs, but then they have to decide what to give us. So the evolution of the single arm investigator initiated studies where based on proposing the concepts, but then the drug companies uh, allowing us to get free antibodies on the protocols. And then we uh, change the protocols according to ma the maturing data. So what you'll see is that in 2010, we started the mini CVD simultaneous inotuzumab, and then uh, we moved it to the frontline older ALL, but then we added subsequently the blenatumumab 
In 2018, in the younger ALL, we proposed the hyper-CVAD sequential bilinatumumab, which was the first antibody that was offered to us. And then after a while, the other company allowed us to add enotuzumab, which we added to the even courses and then with bilinatumumab. In 2018 is the time when we got both companies to allow us to uh, develop the ponatinib bilinatumumab with free drugs. And in 2018, we started using the next generation sequencing uh, for MRD. So I'm going to show you the sequence of the studies as they came to us. At MD Anderson, we developed the hyper regimen in 1992, in which also we changed the CNS prophylaxis to intrathecal therapy. In 2000, we added the rituximab to Burkitt and PBALL. And in 2000, we added the imatinib, then in 2006, the satinib, 2010, ponatinib to the Philadelphia positive ALN. And finally, we started using both blinatumumab and inotuzumab after their FDA approval in 2010. So this is the data in uh, the young, uh, younger adult ALL, so up to the age of 60. And what you see is that since 2010, we had Another improvement in the survival where the five year survival is now 65%. And I'll show you that it's almost going up to 80% with the newer regimen. In the older ALN, we started using the mini CBD in Oblina in 2010 and we doubled the five year survival. So we still uh, are staying with the hyper CVAD regimen because. Uh, we are quite experienced with it. In our hands, it's as good as the pediatric-inspired ins regimen. But for people who are worried about the myelosuppression, we have published a review in cancer that gives you some pearls and vignettes on how to make it safer. The most important change is the reduction in the methoxate and RAC doses during the even courses. So let's start with Philadelphia positive ALL. And this is where before 2000, as shown on this slide, Philadelphia positive ALL was a death sentence unless the patients had an available donor. And even then, their potential cure rate was only 35%. At MD Anderson, we started using the hyper CVAD in Philadelphia positive ALL in 1992. We added imatinib in 2000. We added the satinib in 2006. We replaced it with ponatinib in 2010, changed the intrathecals to 12 because we started seeing some CNS relapses when the patients were living longer. And then we started offering the transplant only in the patients who are not in a major molecular response. In 2017, we designed the ponatinib linatumumab, uh, and I'll show you the results. So very important to see the sequence of the studies. And I have several hidden slides that show the updates with the satinib and with the hyper CVAD ponatinib, which I'm not showing. I'm going to move directly to the ponatinib linatumumab. And this is when, uh, at some point in the research, we uh, finally uh, found out that both blinatumumab and inotuzumab were superior to intensive chemotherapy as single agents in the refractory relapse Philadelphia positive ALL. So this is when we developed the ponatinib linatumumab regimen. Notice the ponatinib is only 30 milligrams daily to avoid the toxicities. And then the blinatumumab starts during the induction. That's very important. It starts during the induction and it's given every six weeks for five courses. After that, we maintain only with ponatinib and so far it's going to be for five years, but we're going to decide on the duration of the ponatinib based on the NGS MRD negativity. So here I'm showing the data with the ponatinib linatumumab in the first 43 newly diagnosed patients that we've treated, and this is accepted in Lancet hematology. What you see is that almost everybody achieves a complete marrow response and a complete molecular response. And look at the follow-up with the two to three year survival of 95%. These are the best results that we've ever had so far. Now, notice that in patients who have refractory relapse ALL or who have chronic phase, chronic myeloid leukemia with the lymphoid blastic phase, we do not get as good results. And this is where we're still continuing the mini CVD ponatinib, but we added the blinatumumab to that. 
And here on this slide, I show how quickly when we add the blinatumumab during the induction, how quickly we get to PCR negativity. So within the induction, at the end of the induction, two thirds of the patients have become PCR negative. And before we start the second blinatumumab, most of the patients are PCR negative. And um, uh, we tested the NGS and we have very similar data. So on this slide, I compare in red the hyper, uh, the ponatinib linatumumab to the latest study with hyper CVAD ponatinib uh, to suggest that perhaps we have a regimen without any chemotherapy, which is more curative than the classical regimens. And of those 43 patients, we have sent only one patient for allogeneic stem cell transplantation. The same was done by the Italian colleagues, but they did things a bit differently. They used desatinib instead of ponatinib. They used blinatumumab three months into the induction, and they still relied on allogeneic transplantation in half of their patients. They have reported the update at the EEHA with a four-year survival of 78%. So I think if you look at the two-year survival here, we I think our studies uh, show better results than the desatinib blinatumumab. And I'm going to advocate that perhaps in an average patient, ponatinib, blinatumumab, given simultaneously during the induction, will be a better regimen. Now, I'm not going to discuss Philadelphia like ALL, except to say that this is an important subset with a genomic profile similar to Philadelphia. It's about a quarter of adult ALL. They have historically a poor prognosis, but not anymore with the newer regimens. It is more common in, among Hispanics, and many of the patients remain MRD positive in complete remission. Philadelphia-like ALL is two distinct entities. 80% of them have CRLF2 overexpression with or without JAK2 mutation, and these improve with the frontline uh, hyper CVAD inotuzumab linatumab, and I'll show you that. And then there's the subset of 20% who have able translocations, and these are the ones that we treat on, on the same regimens as Philadelphia positive ALL. So the breakthrough in pre-BALL has come from the introduction of the newer antibodies targeting CD20, CD19, and CD22. And I'll mention at the end that now we're starting to use the CAR T cells not in active disease, but in minimal residual disease. So it's similar to the experience with allogeneic transplantation in 1980, when we used transplant in active AML and the cure rate was 20%. When we started using it in remission, this is when we started getting high cure rates. And there is uh, emerging evidence that suggests that the CAR T cells are still effective in minimal residual disease in first or second complete remission and you do not need to give them an active disease. So as soon as the FDA approved blinatumumab and inotuzumab, uh, we um, decided to combine them with chemotherapy. So these are the two randomized trials that uh, compared blinatumumab to intensive chemotherapy, inotuzumab to intensive chemotherapy, and both antibodies showed that they were superior to intensive chemotherapy, but if used as single agents, in refractory relapse ALL, the outcome was modest. So you're paying a lot of money for modest results. So as I mentioned in 2017, in the younger patients under the age of 60, we combined hyper CVAD with sequential blinatumumab, four courses, and then we uh, shortened the pump maintenance to one year. So this was the first part of the study in the first 38 patients. Then the second company gave us inotuzumab. So these are the blue arrows. So we added inotuzumab in the two even courses of intensive chemotherapy and then with the two blinatumumab courses. And these are the results in the first 63 patients. CR rate in 100%, MRD negativity 95%, no uh, uh, two months mortality. And for the first time at our institution, the three-year survival was over 80%. On the right side, I show that the addition of inotuzumab in the next 25 patients has not shown yet any relapses. So if this holds true, then it is possible that the potential cure rate 
in adult ELL with the shorter intensive chemotherapy with the two antibody cocktail could be could give us results as rewarding as childhood ALL with much less intensive chemotherapy. And here I divide the patients into the low risk and the high risk. The high risk essentially being Philadelphia-like ALL. And what you see is even, even among the Philadelphia-like ALL, the estimated three-year survival has gone up from 20% to, over, to about 70%, which again is very positive. And this is the outcome by transplant. So, so far, we do not see a benefit in the one-third of patients who underwent allogeneic transplant in first complete remission. I still, I, I still think you need it in the uh, translocation 11Q to 3 and in subsets, some subsets, but not in all the patients. And this shows the hyper-CVAD blinatumumab inotuzumab compared to the immediate previous study of hyper-CVAD of atumumab. So by adding two antibodies, which are highly effective and more effective than intensive chemotherapy, we're able probably to recapture an improvement in the survival of about 20%. And this is not just at, at MD Anderson. There are several single arm trials from the German group and uh, from Australia and others that added blinatumumab in sequence to intensive chemotherapy. And all three studies are reporting high CR rates and good early uh, uh, outcome data in terms of the survival, which is 70 to 92%. Now, this study from France, which uh, uh, from the Netherlands, which was reported at the EHA meeting, caught my attention because what they did in this study is they gave a pre-phase or a therapeutic window with steroids and blinatumumab for two weeks. And then it was followed by intensive chemotherapy and then two more blinatumumab courses. But what caught my attention was this pre-phase of 14 days with blinatumumab resulted in a CR rate before starting the intensive chemotherapy of 63%. And among the patients who received this whole sequence, the CR rate was 98%, MRD negativity 91%. And if you look at the two-year survival in the younger patients, it was 82%. So as good as we're reporting. In the older patients, it was less good, but maybe we can improve it with some tweaking of the data. And the relapse rate so far is only 80%. So very good data also attesting to the power of blinatumumab as a single agent or with steroids. As you know, in patients who are MRD positive in complete remission, the outcome is terrible unless you do a transplant, and the reported three to five year survivals are about 10%. The Germans reported on giving two courses of blinatumumab in patients in first or second complete remission who were MRD positive, and they reported a four-year survival rate of 45%. At MD Anderson, we pushed the envelope. We gave the blinatumumab for five courses, and we gave it to patients with lower degrees of minimal residual disease, 0.01%. So instead of a four-year survival of 10%, historically, or 45% from the German trials, we were rewarded with a four-year survival of 60 plus percent, and on the right side, you see that using allogeneic transplant after that sequence did not improve the outcome. So giving five cycles of blina to Mumab was as good as doing two cycles of blina followed by allogeneic transplant. And today what we're doing is giving the five cycles and then doing CAR T cells at the end of the five cycles. Now in the older patients, uh, the first company that gave us uh, a free drug supply was the company that had inotuzumab. So we designed four cycles of hyper CVAD and the inotuzumab with each of the cycles. And then the second company gave us blinatumumab. So we put it in sequence. So very similar uh, design as the younger patients, except that we reversed the path and uh, we gave uh, all the inotuzumab in the first four cycles. And this shows the outcome of the mini CBD inoblina in older AML compared to hyper CVAD, where we almost doubled the survival. Still, it's not a very good survival because many of the patients are dying in remission or from developing MDS or AML. 
So now we are testing the two antibodies with very minimal chemotherapy to see if we can improve the results. And similar data were reported by other groups who combined low intensity therapy with either blinatumumab in two studies or with inotuzumab in two other studies, reasonably large number of patients, high CR rate, MRD negativity is high and good two to three years survival, except for the swab trial that used blinatumumab only with vincristin steroids and no further chemotherapy. And this is where the three year survival was low. So we still need the chemotherapy in some subsets of the patients unless we use the combination without chemotherapy as we're trying to do. Now I want to show you the data in ALL salvage. So this is where the mini CVD in Oblina started in ALL salvage. And I'm going to show you the data with the original mini CVD in Otuzumab and then with the addition of Blinatumumab. So we treated 112 patients, marrow CR rate 83%. Initially, the veno-occlusive disease was 9%, and then we fractionated the inotuzumab. We capped it at 2.7 milligrams per meter square. We gave ursadiol as prophylaxis, and then we incorporated the blina, and we delayed the transplant, so there was more time between inotuzumab and the transplant. So here's what we see in a disease where um, in salvage one, um, uh, the, the survival was less than 10%. We're getting a three-year survival rate of 41%. This shows the importance of the addition of blinatumumab. So since we added the blinatumumab, the estimated three-year survival has gone up to 50% in a previous situation where intensive chemotherapy and transplant was yielding three-year survivals of less than 10%. Now, then what is the role of allogeneic transplant? We still do it in patients with translocation 11Q23, in precursor T-cell ALL, in Philadelphia-like ALL, if they are both CRLF2 and JAK2 mutated, but we do not do the transplant in minimal residual disease. Uh, we try to um, uh, uh, eliminate the residual disease with blinatumumab and inotuzumab. So in summary, uh, today uh, at MD Anderson, we have broken with the tradition of the intensive chemotherapy. In Philadelphia positive ALL, we use ponatinib or, and blinatumumab. Uh, we, in the pre-BALL, we are using much less chemotherapy for about a year and a half. We are adding the antibody cocktails, in particular uh, blinatumumab, inotuzumab, and rituximab. We're going to start to use the CAR T cells in first complete remission for minimal residual disease to replace allogeneic transplantation. And we're monitoring all the patients now by NGS MRD in order to change therapy if it remains positive and decide on the duration of therapy in the patients who become NGS MRD negative for at least four to six months. Thank you for your attention, and I'm happy to answer questions.